Hi everyone, this is Holly from Hot Humble Pie. Welcome to my channel if you're new and a big warm hello to my subscribers. I love you guys. And as always, I hope you enjoy the show. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you click that button. This was one of my favorite Easter DIYs ever. It looked so high-end in real life. It, it was like my star, you know, the shining star. <laughs> you get any bunny shape you want. I'm choosing this one because I wanted to go for kind of a Beatrice Potter look. It's actually off of one of the Dollar Tree signs, but you can find that same exact shape online. You cut out two of them and then you're going to stuff one. You're going to stuff it. You're going to put a bunch of whatever you can find. I used pool noodles cut up, whatever you can find to make it thicker. I put in some of those towering blocks so that it would become sturdy and heavy. So you just use your imagination here. You can put rocks in there, you can use stuffing, whatever you want, just get it so that it looks more 3D and you wrap the entire thing up with masking tape. And then you're gonna have something that looks like this. So the name of the game here is to get this bunny to look as close to a pottery barn bunny that I saw. So I wanted to cover him with gravel, rock. And the only thing I could think of was to grind up some pinto beans in a blender and it worked brilliantly. I take some Mod Podge, I start covering him with the Mod Podge and then I just start sprinkling the little grinds all over him, shaking him off until he's completely covered. And then I'm gonna go ahead and seal him in with Mod Podge as well. Now you could use lentils ground up you could use split peas if you want a green bunny that might be kind of cute but like i said i'm trying to do something very specific and it did come out almost exactly the same so i was really pleased and then you let him well i'm using wax paper right there inside a tray when he's all dry i take some apple barrel paint in the color pavement and use a sponge and just do my best to try and make him look kind of like a beatrice potter bunny <laughs> He looks really cute when he's all done. And I take a ribbon, I glue it around his neck, put a little bow under his chin, and that's it. Grab a large can, paint it white, get a cute printable, which I'll have down below for you in the description box. I edged it to distress my printable. I'm using Mod Posh to apply the printable to the front of my can. I press it down firmly with a wet sponge to get rid of the wrinkles. And now we're going to need a lid for our large can. Trace the lid that came with the can. I cut out five equal, equal circles in size with cardboard and glue them all together so we have a nice high thick lid and now i'm taking the craft sticks and just cutting them to fit on the top of the lid now for the edge of the lid you can use old shoelaces or a piece of old cloth or material or you could even use more of that ground up pinto beans or moss or whatever you'd like on the side of the cardboard but that's what I did. Old string or rope is the cheapest way to go. Substitute a cut branch for the top handle on the lid and that's it. This next one is a lot of fun. You need cardboard and something to put on the cardboard to make it thicker. So you can get creative with that. You can use an old t-shirt and wrap it up with an old t-shirt to create that bulk. I'm gonna use pool noodles. I'm tracing out four of these eggs like this where I cut out just a frame. And now I'm cutting out my pool noodles because I'm gonna glue that on the frame on both sides to make it thicker. Now I cut out two of these and I cut the second one in half up the middle and you'll see why I'm gluing it right there. That's why, because we're gonna have two of those on either side into that formation right there. And I'm gonna cover mine with nautical rope, but you can cover this with anything you want. Scrap material, some kind of food item that won't perish like what I did with the pinto beans. Once you seal them with glue, 
the ants aren't going to be bothered the mice nobody cares <laughs> once you seal it up with some kind of plastic it's good but you can take an old shirt old string whatever you want to cover this egg in to make it look pretty now the twine is very cheap because I actually take Dollar Tree nautical rope and I pull it apart in three pieces so it keeps the cost extremely low you can also use dried florals I always go outside and pick flowers and hang them upside down in my garage to decorate any of the things that you want but that's on top of an old frisbee and some old ping pong balls that I painted white and then stained to look like wood. Isn't that pretty? And it cost me literally pennies on the dollar to make this beautiful DIY. Another excellent idea for a high-end looking craft are these cans that look like a can, but they're actually cardboard. Hot cocoa comes like this, like Ovaltine. Some coffees do especially in discount stores, the cheaper coffees, like I think I saw Uban comes like this. My daughter gave me her baby formula can, but you can purposely try and buy some food in a can like this. And they do also have these a little bit smaller in the Dollar Tree, but it's fun because you can just use your hand to smash it. Now you can use a regular big can and then just take a big heavy hammer. Um, it was like those rubber hammers and crush them flat on one side but I love these because you can do it with your hand and you just put a pretty print on whatever you want to print off your computer I will provide this one down below I printed it on tissue paper so it was nice and transparent and when I back in the day was really struggling financially I used to use cut up fabric in place of ribbon I would even take an old t-shirt and stain it and kind of make it look shredded on the edges a little bit and it would come up really, really pretty. So you can always use old t-shirts that have been stained or dyed or soaked in tea or coffee, or you can use just brown paint watered down and spray it that way. And they make beautiful trimmings and bows with dried flowers tucked in them. You can make them look absolutely gorgeous, even old lace. And anything you can find around the house, look around because you'd be surprised. Even some wire curled around a pencil tucked in here and there makes a really pretty accent piece. So again, back in the day, I would have just filled this with dried flowers from outside, different vines and leaves that I had dried outside, or I would use them fresh and just enjoy them for as long as they lasted and then either replace them or leave them until they dried out. And sometimes they would dry out beautifully without the leaves falling off. So they still would look beautiful. I would just leave it and kind of watch how it looked on the wall. But if it's just a seasonal decor, this is a perfect little pocket to hold some perfect little beautiful things. <music> Three soup-sized cans painted, and you're gonna be cutting out the pattern of a bunny ear. You can do this however you want. I'm using an old shirt. And then I'm gonna take and stuff these with a bit of polyfiberfill. You can use cotton. I make my ears a little pink. You can use, I use paint, but you can use lipstick to do that or blush if you want. That will work too. Grab some old skewer sticks or a stick from outside. Anytime you see a stick, you can just go outside and get a stick. You don't have to have a skewer stick. I just happen to have those and i'm using some letters from the dollar tree now for this you can print some letters up put just a little light coat of glue stick on them just enough so you can stencil and then you can take them off before they stick and that works too and i'm just it's called a reverse stencil where i'm just kind of putting the lighter color around the edge there i use a brown then i go over it with white you can use a pink whatever you want for you know your it's your easter so do it in the colors that you like paint some little eyes on i used some little beads but you certainly can paint them on and i found some old wire for his whiskers you can use twine old wire and i'm using a little sticker heart for his nose you can cut out a little heart nose from a cereal box and I'm using some greenery again. Totally go to Mother Nature for that one and rely on that to fill up the cans. But I show the first scene here with all three ears. I didn't, I, mean, I couldn't decide whether it looked good with all three ears or if it just looked good with ears in the center. Let me know what you guys think. This is my fourth video on YouTube. So forgive the lighting and the filming. I wasn't really great at it. Didn't quite know how I wanted that to go, but it's good enough for the tutorial. So I cut out three egg shapes using foam board. You can certainly use cardboard. That would be just fine for this craft. And an old mop. If you don't have an old mop, again, get old rope or old material. 
a t-shirt material actually rolls up automatically when you cut it into strips that would work great for this even straws would work for this and you can texture them by putting some baking soda into your paint and tapping it on and that way you would make a textured egg so I substituted these little planter things here with styrofoam cups to keep it on the cheap. I'm taking these three colors, but I'm showing you, you can also use an applesauce cup. You can use some tomato paste cans, be creative. And I'm just taking a wine cork and making little circles here on this one. And for this one, I'm just, this was actually for a boho craft. So I kept the colors very neutral. It was boho farmhouse. So we're doing farmhouse colors there, which are very neutral, but you can change them up to suit your taste. You can use pastel. That would be really pretty too. You can use sticks from outside to hold these eggs up. So I'm just cutting out the bottom. Again, all of this can be done with cardboard for the styrofoam cups. Wherever I use the foam board, you can substitute it with cardboard, which is free. Just get those Amazon boxes, or you can even get boxes from behind stores. And I'm painting this using territorial beige, and then I use the burnt umber to kind of dry brush, and it comes up looking really nice. They totally look like a pot. And I fill them up with lentils to weight them down, so you can use rice, pinto beans, black beans, just anything heavy like that that's cheap to hold these down. I'm finishing off the back with masking tape and hot glue and I paint them black. So you can decide how you want to finish off the back. If you have enough spare material, you can use that. You know, that always works. But these were so fun to make and these in particular came up so chunky and like they actually felt expensive when you picked it up. They looked so high end. I hope you can tell that because I know the filming isn't that great. <laughs> they actually came up so perfect for farmhouse decor and I just added a little polka dot ribbon on the bottom. Totally optional. Again, it could just be a torn t-shirt or a pillowcase for a ribbon at the bottom, but they made such cute Easter decor. This was a gift basket that someone gave me and slowly but surely it just started breaking and falling apart. So I decided to make this into something pretty for Easter. Now you can leave this in its natural color. I went ahead and spray painted it white because I had some spray paint. You, you know, I assume if you're clicking on a crafting video that you do have just basics like glue, paint and scissors because otherwise, you know, obviously that would be hard to craft. But. <laughs> But anyway, I'm just taking some foam board here from the Dollar Tree and I'm cutting it out to fit that center. Now it kept denting and I didn't like the dents, the little indentations, so I took some poster board in black and glued that on top. So you could do that with a cereal box or another piece of cardboard if you wanted that was smooth, but I just wanted it smooth. And now I'm taking a white chalk pen. You could use regular chalk for this. It doesn't have to be the pen or white paint and I'm putting some kind of a design on it. I mean, you can choose whatever design you want. I just freehanded that. I actually used the bunny shape from the Dollar Tree and traced it on there, but I'm using some of the towering blocks to glue it so that it comes up a little higher because I wanted to put some rope around the edge. Again, scrap material for everything here, bows and trimmings and some greenery. And we're all done. And I think this came up so cute. This was some scrap wood from Home Depot. I've talked about how you can get free wood there. It depends on your Home Depot. Sometimes Home Depots are really good about that and other times I've heard since I've made these videos now I've gotten a lot of feedback. Some managers are just kind of weird about it and they'd rather throw it away or you know because if you go back there at night a lot of it's in the dumpster so they'd rather throw it away than give it to you but other managers are like oh we have so much but usually you can find it discounted for sure if they have too much there's usually a section where it's drastically discounted and you can get a piece of this wood super cheap so i just took the dollar tree letters again you can print things up to do that and i went ahead and decorated this board and the whole thing 
came in at a dollar. I had to buy the carrots, but I didn't use all of them for this DIY. And I do have clothes picks holding them up, but you don't have to do that. You can just hot glue them on the string above. And most people do have clothes picks. You can also use regular size clothes picks just for this craft and then take it down after the season's over if you need the clothes picks, but another super cute craft idea. You need a tin can for this one and I got this paint for 50 cents at Home Depot and of course I don't use the whole container but it's from their little accident paints that they make they'll accidentally mix them up and then if people don't buy them they sell them for a discount so you can paint your can whatever color you want I'm just showing how I did it I painted it in a brown color then a cream color and then I distress it a little bit by sanding some of it off and I edge it a little bit with burnt umber and then I just take a print from online and I'm gonna put it on the front here now this is my third video I ever filmed on YouTube so again I'm sorry about the lighting and there's some flashing going on there I was I really didn't know what I was doing and to be honest with you I didn't expect to do a YouTube channel I don't know why or how I uploaded a video it's kind of weird how the whole thing I kind of fell into it but I absolutely love sharing with you guys so here I'm gonna use some beads and I'm showing you that my second video on YouTube was all about how you make super cheap beads so this was a big hit <laughs> and check that out because you can make beads you can make medallions for the end of these little string things you know if you string your beads up and you need something on the end you can use that to make super dirt cheap beads so I take an egg and I speckle it just an old foam egg one out of like a set of eight I think super cheap and I use that for my end but you don't have to do that and if you don't have twine I'm telling you that you can use dental floss and of course I'm telling you here that you could use the fresh pickings from outside because that's what I used to do back in the day but this is a great rustic cute farmhouse decor with a Beatrice Potter flair I absolutely love this one from my same earlier videos I love this idea because you just need a glass container so you could do this with an old mayonnaise jar so keep your jars if they're really big and beautiful your glass jars because they're great for craft ideas you print up any image you want and you don't have to burn the edge this is just what I wanted to do at that time but you can do whatever you can cut it out right up to the very very edge of the you know if I did this again I probably would have just gone really slow and then you know, cut right up perfectly along the edge there so it looked like a perfect cutout. But you just glue it inside any glass container, a little bunny, and then you just proceed to throw in decorations at the bottom. So you can do layers of like, you can grind up the green split pea like we talked about, grind up some flax seeds, or just use flax seed and green peas and alternate them. That would be so pretty. And then add some dried flowers or fresh things on the bottom, any kind of little landscape or beautiful like a flower a dried rose anything you want to put in there for spring but this is just a great seasonal decor again for pennies on the dollar craft sticks I love them you can make so many awesome things with craft sticks this is my earlier video again these are all from I th like two and a half almost three years ago I'm using some scrap wood I'm gonna cut it into two separate pieces like that now I've shown crates before that I've made on my channel I've just never done it this way so I thought it would be nice to show a different way of making a crate is just to take some scrap wood like that and put some craft sticks on the side and on the bottom and voila you have this awesome crate I used watered down burnt umber because I wanted this to be a little darker but you know at Christmas how we take and use a barn for the little animals and Mary and Joseph and the baby. I thought it would be really fun to do this same kind of concept, but with a crate. So I'm using cardboard here and just covering this with green moss. You can use cut up grass from outside. That would work just fine. I used a bunny. I'm showing you here that you can use something like this, which I'm gonna show you further down in the video here if you stay tuned. 
but this is the Dollar Tree Buddy. You could also put a cross in here. This would be beautiful for that and with a little shroud, a piece of cloth on it or a couple flowers glued in the center of the cross made out of craft sticks. But this is a beautiful way to get some seasonal festivity in your house for, again, pennies on the dollar. This one was literally my very first video on YouTube. So I love that shape from the Dollar Tree sign that they sell. It says, Happy Easter. There's a bunny on the side and I will cut him off and I've used him. You might recognize him. He's been the shape for my Pinto bean covered bunny, for the bunny on the uh, like faux chalkboard that I put in the basket. And he's the bunny I'm using now. This is how I take Dollar Tree signs and I recycle them. But if you don't have access to a Dollar Tree, don't let that stop you. You can find all of these kind of shapes online and you can just trace it right off your computer screen too. You just hold a piece of paper up and gently trace with a soft, like light colored marker that's washable. In case it goes through to your screen, you can wash it off. But I'm using Epsom salt to cover him and regular table salt would look super cute too. You could do it either way, but that's it. He's literally just a little bit of foam board. And of course, foam board can be substituted by cardboard any day of the week, especially with this kind of craft because you can cover the edges. So I just painted it brown and then I start gluing on the salt. And while that's drying, I'm taking some scrap wood and just staining it brown. And this is free wood that I got at Home Depot and I've moved since. I haven't actually asked my Home Depot if they do that here. I will let you guys know. I will keep up to date on that. I will keep you guys up to date to see if I'm having trouble now <laughs> getting any kind of free or discounted wood. But to keep that salt on, you just mist it with a bit of hairspray and I used some twine to make a flower and a bow and painted some buttons that were the wrong color, a darker color to make this very farmhouse. This was supposed to be extremely rustic and farmhouse at that time. That's how my home decor was, but I love the way this came out and this was pretty much almost a free DIY. For this one, you're just going to use a bunny shape from online. This is the one that I chose and I traced it out on cardboard and then I'm going to take and cover it with one of those microfiber cloth, micro, micro fiber cloths from the Dollar Tree, but you can use an old towel. You can use a washcloth. You can use a flowered shirt, a plain man's shirt. I mean, you can use any scrap material that you have for this and you can get really creative and you can just cover it with, you could pull cotton apart. You can take sticks from outside and cover this bunny old bark. If you see bark on the ground, you can collect it in small pieces and cover this bunny. This is where it gets really fun with these kind of crafts because you can get really creative and create a very textured, beautiful little bunny seasonal decor piece again for pennies on the dollar and sometimes even free. Grab yourself a cereal box and cut it into the shape of an envelope. Right there, you can see what I did. I did this one pretty much by eye, but you can find these shapes online. And I painted mine with white acrylic paint, and I just chose some prints from online again to cover this cardboard up. They will be down below as a free printable if you want to use the ones that I chose, or you can search for your own. And I'm using some craft sticks now. I cut them down the center to get the edges here because I did want to open this little envelope up so that I can put some little flowers down inside the center there. So the middle was a little flimsy and I decided to take a little piece of the craft stick and put it up the center to make sure that this stayed open. And then I just use another craft stick for the bottom and voila, you have a super cute little decor accent piece and you can put it on a tear tray, you can put it on a floating shelf. This is a great accent piece. I love these little tiny pieces of decor for the season, especially if you're into tiered trays. I love tiered trays. They make a big statement. For being little things, when they're all decorated, they make a humongous seasonal statement.
For this project, I'm showing you an alternative way to make a crate. This is just a smaller version. I'm using four of the towering blocks. And once you use those in the corner of the crate, it kind of dictates what size it can be. You can't make it too big or too long or it will start to look like a tray. So if that helps you with kind of eyeing up the measurements a little bit, that's what I, I eye everything. Unfortunately, I don't measure unless it's something really like I built a chair once, I gave you guys a measurement because you really needed that so the chair didn't fall. But <laughs> for a little crate like this, you definitely just go by eye. And two of the jumbo craft sticks from Walmart worked perfect for the bottom of this crate. I just cut them to fit and we're all done. This next one's lots of fun, and this is the one I suggested you could also put inside a crate if you didn't have a tiered tray. It would be like a cute little centerpiece if you didn't want to do like a cross or you didn't have a bunny or an egg, you could do this. So I'm just taking the craft stick in the jumbo size from Walmart, and I'm, well you can see what I'm doing, I'm just deliberately cutting kind of crooked and edging it and holding it really tight so it doesn't crack too much, but I want it to look like an old cracked, rustic wooden sign that's been outside for a long time and I dry brush some white paint on it take a pencil write cottontail farm I'm gonna go over that with a permanent marker then dry brush it I'm gonna take some more craft sticks and make a little post you know a little stand for it and I just take a marker the furniture pen marker and stain that one and I use the towering blocks from the Dollar Tree to make a stand and glue for you guys if you don't have the moss because that costs extra money you can just glue some clippings from outside around the bottom but this came up so so cute and i'm not even sure if this ran me more than like 20 cents to make oh my gosh maybe not even that but i love these kind of little accent pieces like this because they do deliver a big statement again for very 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 little money in fact the year i made this this was one of everybody's favorites and i had to smile because right it cost me pretty much nothing <laughs> For this project, you're going to need a cereal box, and I just trimmed out another shape of a bunny, and I used some material to cover him. You can use an old shirt, again, scrap material for any material that you see me using here. And sometimes you can pick up material super cheap at a thrift store. You find like scraps that they're selling, or you can get old curtains. I've seen curtains go as cheap as a dollar at a thrift store, and you can get like 20 projects out of it. So, well, depending on how big your project is, but that's a cheap way to find fabric as well. And now I'm showing you how I made a barn shape with craft sticks. So I take two sticks and glue them on the back and I leave them on while I'm cutting because it helps prevent the craft sticks from splitting. You could also wrap your craft stick really tightly with masking tape while you're cutting. That also helps prevent the splitting if you're worried about that. I tend to just kind of nibble with my scissors and go really slow. And that, for me anyway, usually stops it from cracking. I mean, sometimes I get unlucky. Sometimes the sticks are faulty too because they're cheap and they'll crack even when I'm careful. But for the most part, I have good luck with that method of doing it. But I'm just decorating my little bunny now and I'm gonna glue him in the center and another super cute little piece for a tiered tray, a floating shelf, and cost me pretty much nothing to make. This one was definitely a potential cardboard craft. You do not need wood for this. You can cut out a cardboard in a square. And I'm showing you here, I made these roses the same way I made these beads. And you just roll it till you get a rose. All I did was roll and then tap it down with my fingers on the top so the petals folded a bit and bingo, we had roses. <laughs> <laughs> Voila, and now I'm painting my roses white. I have this printable here and I lost the film footage I remember that but all I did was take my hot glue and Put like little zigzag lines around the edge to make a faux wood 
grain, I guess. This works really well on small things, especially. But if you're using cardboard, you would definitely go around the edge of your cardboard as well to hide the edge. And then you just paint it to be whatever color frame you want. You can do white and then dry brush some brown on there to make it look, you know, rustic. I, originally I was gonna make a darker frame and then I ended up going lighter. And I glue the roses in the corner and that's it. We have a super cute little Easter decor piece right there. And again, cost me pretty much nothing to make. I'm including this one because typically you can get or come across those plastic eggs for free sometimes. People throw them away. You can also use real eggs to do this if you hard boil them and you're just doing it for just the season and then you probably have to throw them away after a while. But if you buy a package of the plastic eggs, I believe you still can get them for a dollar at Dollar General. And you can even get them for a dollar on clearance after Easter's over, like from Walmart. So keep your eye out for that. But this was such a fun one. I just took Mod Podge watered down and took a white napkin and put it all over in a way that created wrinkles on purpose. It was actually fun because I didn't have to worry about the wrinkles. And I glue the little designs on the little Easter bunnies. Again, I'll have the link down below for you. And then I do white paint the next morning over it. I dry brushed on territorial beige to get that brown color and then I outlined the paper print with burnt umber and they're both apple barrel paints. And you just go outside you can cut some wood rounds and bingo you'll have these super cute egg decor pieces. For this next project, I took some sticks from outside and I cut them up. I'm using old wine corks and a skewer. The skewer can be, you know, you could use a branch instead of the skewer. You don't have to use the skewer. And you absolutely can use cardboard instead of the Dollar Tree egg there. So you can just cut out cardboard in the shape of an egg. So I cut my wine corks down. As you can see, I'm going to make little flowers there. And you, you know, if I had to do this craft again, I think I would actually use sticks for the stems on the flowers. I think that would look better. But this was my fourth video again, you guys. I apologize for the lighting and the occasional flickering. I was still, I'm still learning now. <laughs> oh, the technical part. That's not where my, my talent is for sure. But I go ahead and I paint these Easter colors. This was Boho Farmhouse. For that look, I think this was perfect. I made little flowers there and then I just distress it a little bit. I glue the sticks at the bottom. You can also take the sticks and glue them around the edge of the egg. If you cut them small enough, that would make a pretty edging or you can just use um, some twine to cover the edge of the um, Cardboard, if you choose to do cardboard, got to get creative there for sure. You can even use an old shoelace to cover the edge, but you definitely want to cover the edge of the cardboard there so you can't tell it's cardboard. And I put a bow at the top. I took some buttons that were yellow. I didn't like that color, so I painted them brown and put them in the middle. But I think this made a super cute wall decor piece for Boho Farmhouse. It's got that vibe. So again, pennies on the dollar, you guys. Seriously, this cost me, and if you do it with cardboard, almost nothing. I also use some dry brushing with white paint on the wood. You can see it right there to frost it up a bit, but I think this came up super, super nice. Okay, so this is one that was in a recent video, but it definitely had to make today's cut because it is definitely $1 and under. I am using a Dollar Tree bunny right there and I would suggest that you use a cereal box to cut that out because you don't have to worry about the edges at that point. You can use two layers of it and glue it together with hot glue. That will prevent it from curling. Or you can use some craft sticks or skewers on the back and discreetly glue them so that your you know, board doesn't glue and then tack it down on your craft at the end so that you can't see, you don't want it to flip over so people can see that it's not wood. But this was my first time experimenting with wax to see if I could get wood grain on cardboard and it worked pretty decently. It was really nice. You really can't tell on the camera how good it looked in real life. So I did end up gluing a bow on the top that kind of hid the egg, but it did detract from the beauty of the egg. The egg was still very beautiful. And that's a Dollar Tree doily. 
that came in a set of two for a dollar twenty-five. So it's still under a dollar. If you have scrap lace that would be fine too or some kind of crochet or you could even wrap this with a bit of twine kind of zigzag all over the place or do a little crochet with your twine and make like that you know how we make those um, um, hangers for our planted pots with the crochet knot you could do that but this came up so so cute it would go perfect with french country decor or cottage core decor kind of it might go for farmhouse but usually farmhouse no, I actually, with a little splash of spring colors, it could pass for farmhouse. The other crafts in the video, not so much so, but this could definitely be farmhouse, but super, super affordable and came up super, super cute. Another one from the same video recently, but had to make the cut. I'm using cardboard for this one, and I use the polyfiberfill, but I got this foam here for free. It was a computer screen cover that I ordered, and it came with protective foam, and I kept it, and that would be a perfect um, substitution for the polyfiberfill. Cotton would be, so this absolutely can, I bought my material, but again, scrap material, this absolutely can come in at $1 and under, because you're just cutting out a bunny, then you're going to put some kind of stuffing on the front and back of him, and then you're going to cover him with some kind of material and go about decorating him, and they make great, beautiful little accent pieces for Easter, very festive, very easy to do, and you know, I had a lot of fun. For the little cottontails, you can just use cotton balls, that would be super cute. But that's it, we're all done, and I love these. And this one comes in last place, but because it does use a glass jar and you do not have to use a glass jar from the Dollar Tree, it absolutely can be made for $1 and under. This can be an old jam jar, mason jar, mayonnaise jar. I love the mayonnaise jars from Trader Joe's because they're glass. A lot of times if you go into the Whole Foods type stores, Aldi's, their mayonnaise uh, will still be in glass. So. I try to purposely buy it that way, to be honest. And this can, you know, can be made using that. So I just use a glue stick to glue that label on, cover it with some Mod Podge, and voila, you have a beautiful seasonal decor. I show it here as the jar with the lid, but I actually prefer it as a vase for Easter. So right now it's on my coffee table. <laughs> I hope putting all of my $1 and under crafts into one easy to find video was helpful for you today. If it was, give me a big thumbs up, comment, share my video, it really does help me here on YouTube. And as always, until the next one, breathe deep, fret not, and do things that make you happy.